Hello everyone, my name is Chance Button and welcome back to the StarCraft II Legacy of the Void campaign. Now I've been having a little bit of trouble with filming because the game keeps crashing on me, which I'm terribly surprised at. Um, normally Blizzard titles don't crash this much, especially so long after release. Um, but this one has been giving me a lot of trouble. So, um, because it makes things technically a lot easier on me, uh, I am now filming this uh, without a camera. Now, before we get started on the episode itself, uh, let me go back to say that I just edited the last several episodes and realized that last episode, I missed a very uh, important thing in the assembly panel screen that we're looking at now. All of the, uh, most of the classes uh, off to the left, Warrior, were flashing, indicating that there were new units available uh, to look at and possibly incorporate into our army. They're not flashing now, because just before recording, I quickly selected them all so that uh, the game would think that I looked at them, and Rohana would not bother us every time we switched. Because before, I was having this trouble where, like, you know, it would say, oh, there's a new melee warrior, a new ranged warrior, a new robotic assault, etc. So I'd click on one, have a look at it. And then when I clicked on the next, Rohana would give me some spiel about, oh, now there's new purifier technology. Then I'd after looking at that, I'd look at the next, and then, oh, there's new purifier technology or Taldarim support, and then click on the sentries. And just basically every time I clicked on something, she just would not shut up. Um, and the way to fool the computer into not doing that anymore is just to quickly, you know, click through and look at everything so that it'll leave you alone. But anyway, I digress. Uh, the only thing really worth looking at, in my opinion here, is uh, the new option we have for a robotic assault, which is the Vanguard. Uh, so in the interest of time, I'm not going to look uh, at anything else in great detail. And just look at this, because we're going to pick this. So the uh, Vanguard is an equivalent to the Immortal or the Annihilator, and it is Taldarim Faction. Its ability is that, um, well, like its brethren, it does bonus damage to armored units. Its special is it will do area damage to ground units. And the reason that I think that the Vanguard might be useful is because uh, the Immortal and the Annihilator have a problem dealing with uh, lots of lighter units. They're great against siege tanks and things, but against zerglings, zealots, marines, they have more of an issue. And so that area damage uh, will be helpful in those circumstances. And as the, uh, the video that I will probably zoom up to take the entire screen uh, shows, uh, that demonstrates the use of the uh, vanguard, then they could also be uh, more useful against units like Marauders. Typically, area damage is not so great against heavy units because heavy units tend to be large and not clumped up, um, but I guess Marauders uh, are one of the few exceptions to that. Uh, so anyway, we'll go ahead and select that for now. Dream on your threat, Artemis. All else is futile. Yeah, yeah, we're dealing with you, Alarak. Keep your pants on. Uh, so now we're going to be going to Slain, which is the Taldarim homeworld, I think? Siding with Alarak is indeed a risk. We already heard Artana say all this. So yeah, let's travel to Slain, and we will try and get Alarak elected as leader so that he will enact a cessation of hostilities between our peoples, as he puts it. Which is not the same thing as an alliance, but I'm hoping that that's what he meant, was an alliance. It is an armada. Behold the Death Fleet under Amon's command, poised on laying waste to all life in the sector. Then we had best act swiftly. Rakshir, usurpation by ritual combat cannot be rushed. Its rights demand careful preparations oh, if they are to be accepted. We are in orbit above a hostile world with an imposing fleet, and you speak of preparation? It's a bit late for that. I intend to depose Malash, the ruler of an entire people, and bring them under my thrall. You will aid me, and in return, I will remove the Taldarim from this conflict. That was our bargain. To do this, the ritual must be carried out as tradition demands. Well, what does it demand? Exactly. This bargain grows less appealing by the moment. 
Oh, well, you're only now coming to that conclusion. Yeah. No, the bargain wasn't very appealing to begin with, but we don't have much of a choice. I wish to know more about this Rakshir, your ritual combat. To understand Rakshir, you must first understand the sacred chain of ascension that ultimately links to Amon. Oh, God. Each of us is shackled to his will, and to the will of he who is in the link above. And yet, there is a way to ascend. Mm -hmm. By blade and blood, any Taldarim can usurp the position of the one above his station. It is through this ritual that Amon's ascendants are assured to be the most capable to carry out his will. Then Malash is the most powerful of your people? He is considered so. But he has yet to face me. Yeah, that doesn't work. Our scouts are reporting the Dominion is attempting to fight back the Golden Armada. Despite their efforts, multiple systems have fallen. Hang in there, guys. We'll, uh, we'll try and help you out as soon as possible. There are things I understand about the Taldarim. Their zeal. Their desire to appease their god. What I cannot understand is why Amon would cast aside his loyal allies so easily. Why he would betray their sacred trust and treat them as fodder. I have felt his grand ambitions, Artanis. The dark truth is, Amon wishes no allies aside from his hybrid. Mm -hmm. He believes he's ending the cycle of violence, but he only brings about an eternity of abomination. Okay, and this again helps us how exactly? I, I, I don't know how this helps. Um, I'm also not sure exactly how... Amon cast aside the Taldarim um, because it seems like he's always treated them as fodder. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what's changed about that. I've been analyzing the Taldarim's war machines. Their technology is cloned from Kali designs. Aside from the construction materials, there is little deviation. How is this feat possible? There have always been legends of vessels that set out into the cosmos and never returned. Of attack forces gone missing. I have heard these stories. Whispers of angry spirits of our past that strike when you are most vulnerable. Imagine if all this time we have been fighting an unknown war against the Taldarim. It would explain a great deal. How sad. They are thieves, never knowing the joys of their own invention. How despicable. An interesting thing about that, they mentioned that there are legends of ships disappearing and things like that. Well, if a ship disappeared, wouldn't you know about it for a fact? You know, oh, these people were scheduled to leave, they departed on such and such a date, the records show that they never made it to their destination, our last communication with them was here. You know, you should know exactly who and what disappeared. I mean, you know, they're supposed to be a highly advanced civilization with records and sensors with all that has happened i cannot help but think of Iyer. i am curious phoenix what is your last memory of our home i remember being alone i do not know whether it was the blade or my faith that wavered but in that moment the zur struck i am sorry for stirring painful memories i will leave you be Eh, it's fine. You have to deal with that sort of thing. In order to invoke the challenge of Rakshir, preparations must be completed. As the decrees of old describe. Ready your warriors. Malash will surely attempt to interfere. I hope you're going to give us more details than just that. These are Malash's guardians. I need you to eliminate them before I proceed. Okay. If it must be done. Wait, what is that strange fog? Tarazine. It flows in cycles from the chasms of slain, bringing us closer to the void. Amon's forces will be able to manifest until the flow subsides. They do not possess their full power here, yet they will strike at your base ruthlessly. 
Great. I thought you promised an assured victory, Alarak. You enjoy a challenge, do you not? Very well. My forces will pursue the Guardians while it is clear. When the Terrazine flows, we must endure the onslaught. Okay. Now... The Terrazine will rise shortly, my warriors. Be vigilant. Void rays can now be warped in at our Stargate. They are ideal for intercepting foes in the battle ahead. Well done, Faye Smith. We will make good use of them. Now, we've got to be careful here because this is actually really hard from what I've seen so far. Uh, there are a lot of enemies that are going to be coming after us and holding the base is going to be very difficult. The difficulty for this mission suddenly jumps a lot from the previous one. The veil between this world and the void is lifting. Amon's forces will arrive soon. We need our units to be able to defend until our defensive structures are online, and then hopefully the defensive structures will help take some of the pressure off of our units. Now we need the Void Rays to be focusing on the Colossi. There we go. Good, that helps a little bit. Uh, we will need more units. We just lost some Zealots. Bearing in mind that we do have access to Solar Lance. So like, now might be a good time because these are fairly vulnerable units to the Solar Lance. That'll help keep some pressure off. We need upgrades as soon as possible as well. Um, because that will make uh, our units a lot more efficient than they otherwise would be. And we won't have to spend quite as many resources because they won't be dying all over the place. Oh, here comes another wave. Now the Void Rays are extremely powerful and uh, very useful. Oh, there's a Siege Tank. Gotta take that out. And because we have automated Vespine refining, it would be to our advantage to get all our assimilators up and running uh, as soon as possible so that we can collect as much from Vespane as possible uh, quite quickly. Okay, the fog should subside any moment now. We've held off for the first wave. The Guardians stand watch over the shrines. Kill them slowly and painfully. My people will fight with honor, even when we are fighting for you. But first, we must establish our defenses. Yeah, no kidding. Um, and I am not, I'm not gonna push out during this first Terrazine Fog uh, clear time, uh, because right now we really just need to build up our forces, like Artenis uh, suggests. Not only building our defenses, um, but also building our army. Uh, it turns out that Pushing out is really quite difficult. Hierarch, I was able to scan the Taldarine motherships in this region. They are carrying shipments of Solarite. I don't think Alarak would mind if we liberated them. Good idea, Karax. We will do that, and I don't really care if he minds or not. Um, but uh, we don't want to push out until we get more in the way of forces. Mixing some Phoenix into our composition might be useful. Because the enemy do tend to send a lot of ground units, like lots of zealots and things, and the Phoenix can pick up and immobilize uh, temporarily units like that. So if nothing else, some Phoenix might be good just so that they will instantly take some things just like out of the fight. The fog gathers, Artanas. Make your preparations if you are so inclined. There are also air units that the Phoenix will be able to help take out as well. And we need to get a cybernetics core so that we can actually upgrade air units like the Phoenix and the Void Rays. Okay, here we go. Second round with the Terrazine Fog. Where are they coming from first? They're either coming from the north or the northwest. Northwest. There we go, like those stalkers were just lifted in the air so that they couldn't fire at anything. 
systems. I think those uh, those Phoenix will be a useful addition into the mix to keep the rest of our forces alive. Let's make sure we stay on top of our upgrades. The Parazine fumes are gone. Continue your hunt, Artanas. We need more pylons. Let's go ahead and build a couple more pylons for supply purposes, and we will go ahead and attack uh, in the meanwhile. We will start by clearing out the nearest area. Behold the strength of the Chosen! Taldarim ships are heading towards our Nexus, Hyrock. Bring them down! Let's, uh, let's send the, uh, Phoenix. Let's send the Phoenix to go intercept their ships, because they can't really do much to help our army, our main army. Oh god, the, uh, Phoenix are getting, the Phoenix are getting ripped apart, actually. This shall not be our end, but a new beginning. We need to retreat now that we've destroyed the Guardian guy up here. And, uh... And help with the defense of our base. We're actually gonna lose a lot of our defensive structures and things. That's not good. Let's go ahead and Solar Lance and the game crash. Okay. Phoenix are just getting decimated. I think that's because the scouts are, are really good anti-air units. We need to send our Phoenix to go take out the, uh, take out the warp prism so that the reinforcements stop. There we go. Come on. Oh, man. Our forces are just getting decimated. The enemy is extremely powerful. I, I don't know why they are so powerful in this mission. We need to start building up again some more forces. We also need more defenses. So the fog... This is the time we're supposed to be able to push out as well. Um, so the fog arrives in a minute 30. So we could potentially start pushing out and doing a little bit of damage. Fortunately, we do have that quick retreat ability from the uh, Spear of Doom. So, we can afford to push out brazenly with our army, and then we can get them back very quickly when we need to. We approach the void. Ready your warriors. We approach the void? What? You mean the Terrazine Fog is coming? Is that what you mean? Alright, so in a moment we will get ready to, you know, emergency flee. And... flee! And our whole army warps back instantly. Very nice. Now, they're sending attacks pretty quickly from one side to the other, so it's difficult to move our army to respond quickly enough. Like this. So now, we need to use the Solar Lance uh, to help us re react quickly. There we go. Where are they come? Okay, here they come again. Let's go out and meet them respond as quickly as possible. And now they should be coming from the north again, so let's get into position. Yeah, here they come. Ah, uh, there's just so much stuff coming our way. How do they expect us to be able to deal with this? And we're only on one mining base, which is a real problem, because we've got loads of Vespian gas, but very little in the way of minerals. Let's get a robotics facility. Amon's forces are gone. Now's your chance to attack the Guardians. Yes, I'm going, I'm going. Let's get a robotics facility so that we can diversify our forces a little bit. And then we'll come down and we will try... We will try and take out this Guardian. Do we want to build a forward pylon? Yeah, we'll build a forward pylon so we can warp to it. Our forward pylon is probably going to get destroyed next time the Terrazine flows. Your power is greater than we believed, Firstborn. Yes, it is. I'm glad you recognize that. 
Another guardian has fallen. What a thrilling sight. If it is so thrilling, why not join us? Well, I must save my strength to face Malash, of course. Of course you do. Okay. We've got two minutes until the next fog. So, we might be able to destroy another guardian in that time. Yep, Pylon's not doing so well. Oh yeah, I forgot these guys were on their way to our base, aren't they? Yeah. Gotta be careful about that. They should be there shortly. Alright, let's, let's again soften up as many of the enemy forces as possible using the Spear of a Dune. And remember, we can, we can retreat our forces in a hurry uh, using our special ability from the- oh my gosh. Using our special ability from the Spear of a Doom. So we can afford- oh crap. We can afford to fight right up until the last moment um, before the fog rolls in. We have full power. You know little of Alarak, or you would not aid him. Well, we don't need to know all that much about him, just that he's going to do what we want, hopefully. Oh, what glorious deaths. You do well to promote my cause, Artanis. I only hope that is true. The fog gathers, Artanis. Make your preparations if you are so inclined. We are. We are definitely retreating so that we can deal with things back at base. Now some colossi might be nice, so we're going to build a robotics facility so that we'll be able to construct some of them. And uh, we're going to need a new Kadaran monolith because the one that was over here broke. Alright, let's try and hold up again. Oh gosh, actually lots of them broke. Oh no, there's so much crap. Good lord. Perhaps we should just, like, invest entirely in defending one side with static defenses and just leave our army on the other side instead of moving back and forth. Perhaps that would be the smartest move. We should also keep our army kind of in between the two possible routes of attack so that we can move rapidly between them. Is this side strong enough to defend itself yet? Not fully, but we're getting that way. Fog is fading. What better time is there to slay my enemies? To war. So the vanguard can only attack ground units. That's what I thought, but it was worth a double check. All right, let's let's try. Let's try doing as much damage here as we can. I would like to be able to take out this mothership and get the solarite for it. Hopefully, we have enough void rays to be able to do it. Yes. We have destroyed a Taldarin mothership. Excellent. Only one remains. We will group our army up and push north out of the base this time, uh, and try and get to the other mothership and the. Uh, next guardian, which is the last guardian. We serve the will of the High Lord. Oh, uh, the enemy's coming. Oh, but, oh god, they're coming from multiple directions. Enemy ships have set a course for our nexus. Yeah, that's not good. We need to intercept those. Because our forces at home can't handle it. Alright, well, our army has at least intercepted one. Systems at we can perhaps solar lance the other. Let's solar lance this. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah! Okay. We took out most of them. We took out the warp prism that was going to warp in all the enemy units. And the scouts actually diverted to attack our army, which is pretty dumb because... That's where we would like them to attack. Our army is the most capable uh, thing we have for destroying them. So if they can just come right to us, it saves us the trouble. Alright, now this army is getting strong enough to be able to push out and do whatever we need it to be able to do. 
before pushing out was a bit of a problem because we would take heavy losses being drastically underprepared. But this army, this army's getting strong. You should have everything now, Face Smith. Thank you, Hierarch. I shudder to think of what they were planning to do with it. Well, it doesn't matter now, because they're not going to get the chance. Do you sense it, Tarazine? A shame you'll have no time to enjoy it with Amon's forces coming after you. Don't worry, we'll be fine. Let's just do as much damage here as we can before we go. Okay, everybody group up, we're getting out. Achievement! Total Recall! I guess that's probably for just, like, warping enough forces around the battlefield. Your warriors have oh, what? The enemy. Wait, why, why were people left behind? Oh, I guess maybe they hadn't made it to our army yet. Ooh. Sorry, guys. I was sure we brought everybody back. Uh, can you deal with those colossi, please, uh, Kaderan Monoliths? Thank you. Jeez. Okay. That's not good. Oh, and our base is running running out of resources. That's even worse. Uh, oh, hey, there's another mining base we can take up here. We definitely need to do that, because we need the money. Though I don't know if we could defend it. If we'd known about it earlier, we might try, but right now I think that we need to just end the mission before we lose, because time is not on our side. We need to just quickly kill the last guardian and be done with it. I would go do it now, except that our entire base would be destroyed before we could do it. Because they are just relentless in their assault. I mean, good lord, look at this! Broodlords, carriers, and battle cruisers. That's just insane. Alright, let's move out now. There's only a few seconds of fog. Amon's forces are gone. Now's your chance to attack the Guardians. I wish we could save time by just doing a point-to-point -point transportation of our units to where the Guardian is. I mean, we were just there a minute ago. Well, like four minutes ago. Oh, there's a stray carrier. Just blow that up on our way. Alright, let's resume the assault. Okay, what do we want to destroy here with priority? Probably just like a load of stuff along this line. That was not as effective as I thought it was going to be. Stand against a god? Yes. Behold the strength of the chosen. I think we did it. You go to your death, Alarak. The dark god will destroy you. I have heard enough of his lies. <laughs> Your ritual is complete. What now? Well, they were not part of the ritual, but these traitors would have aided Malash in it, and I wish to see them die. Gosh dang it, Alarak! Now the time has come. Hi, Lord, hear me! I invoke the right of Rakshir. Fight me according to our laws, or die a coward! We meet in combat at daybreak. You shall have your challenge. Can't we just do it now and save all the trouble? Eh, okay. So, what, what were those achievements? I'm getting a lot of achievements all of a sudden. Or have we always been getting that many achievements? I am going to make this clear. The Templar are not a weapon you can wield as you wish. We are not here to slay your enemies under false pretenses. Deceive me again, and this alliance of ours comes to an end. Slaying Malash's guardians fulfilled more than one purpose. Once the High Lord lies dead at my feet, none will challenge my... But you should have been forthright after with us. All these years, my victory nearly at hand. I feel his concern on Tannis. He knows that I'm coming for him. Malash? No. Amon. 
through the breath of creation, I peer beyond the veil. Oh yes, I feel his rage washing over me. He knows I no longer fear him. He knows that the Talgarim have no color for him to control. I will turn the Chosen against him. Do not assume you are already victorious, Alarak. Do not let the Terrazine cloud your judgment. You have a battle to win first. The battle is already won. Ugh. In my mind's eye, I have delivered the killing blow in a thousand ways. From my experience, overconfidence is your opponent's greatest ally. Do not let yours aid Malash. Spoken as one who welcomes defeat. Spoken as one who really wishes to avoid defeat. A new combat unit awaits factional assignment hierarchy. Alright. Malash has proven himself to be a dangerous leader. Indeed. That's why my victory shall be the sweetest of ecstasy. Oh, God. Has he defeated many in this right? Countless. He ascended the chain with brutal wrath, plowing through all who opposed him. It's as if he were blessed by the Dark God. They called him the Blade of Amon. And still he was challenged? It is our way. He defeated each with lingering cruelty. Malash revels in bringing his challengers to the edge of death and tormenting them for a time after. That does not comfort me, Alarak. Comfort is a myth given to younglings until they are ready for the trials and pain that is true existence. Leave me. It is time to make preparations. I mean, I understand why that's not comforting to Artanis. But on the other hand, it does mean that we didn't come here for nothing. Either way, even if Alarak loses, then we can still break out the popcorn and watch him suffer. Which he undoubtedly deserves greatly. This chain of ascension is a despicable practice. It is how the Kalai once thought of the Nerezim's shadow walk. There is no comparison. Our society was not founded upon... Their culture is one unyielding hierarchy. Servant to master. A constant reinforcement of their bondage to Amon. But they have been lied to, Matriarch. And how could this change if it is all they have ever known? Our people once only knew hatred of one another. Suspicion. Yes. We viewed your practices as barbaric. And you viewed ours as cruel. It is the same with the Tal'Darim, with the destruction of Amon, and the revelation of his betrayal. I expect their entire society to seek out who they truly are, and what they wish to be. Well, I mean, ooh, there's that nice view of the Colossus again. He's just staring at us like, hey, can I join in? Can I be a part? No. Oh, okay. The assault ships are now ready for your inspection. All right, so now we can have either a Void Ray. So the Void Ray gets a longer range as it attacks. Uh, or we can have a Destroyer with a Chaining Laser. Ooh, deals damage to additional targets as it continues to attack. So it can hit a lot of things at once. Does it do as much damage? Okay, let's go with the uh, let's go with the Destroyer with its Chaining Laser. That sounds cooler. Um. Carex? Hierarch, what would you ask of us? Just tell me what's on your mind. Carex, the keystone, it's reacting. To void energies upon the planet's surface, most likely. I've seen this before on Ulnar. This Terezine must be directly linked to the void. The Tal'Darim call it the breath of creation. They believe imbibing it allows them to speak directly to Amon. A far-fetched claim. Yet I cannot deny its plausibility. The substance's properties appear to be foreign to our universe. Perhaps this is why it is so holy to them. They seek out planets rich in Terezine and turn them into temples to their god. Our coming here may be a blessing to us. If the Keystone reacts to Terezine like it does with Void Energy, I may be able to use it to stress the artifact, determine its limits. Perhaps fate has not abandoned us completely. We must have faith. I prefer results, Hierarch. Amon is powerful in measures that eclipse even the Queen of Blades. 
There is no room for uncertainty. Yeah, but, I mean, that's where hard work will get us. Um, if we need more Terrazine as well, not only does our... Um, I, I hesitate to say alliance, but our cooperation with the Talarim mean we could possibly get our hands on as much Terrazine as we need, but the humans also have Terrazine um, for their Spectre programs. And in fact, in the original campaign, we stole a bunch of Terrazine uh, from the Talarim. Alright, what have we got here? We've got a little bit more Solarite to work with. And I like I like basically everything we have, so let's just increase starting supply and shield recharge time. Yeah. Yep, that's good. Alright, let's take a look at what the next mission looks like. The darkness within calls for the blood of Malash. Now is the hour of my ascendance. The Brakshir commence! Okay. So in the next episode, we will overthrow Malash, which I imagined that that's supposed to be... <laughs> oh, I, I just noticed I like in Alarak's portrait how it says, High Lord, contested, in parentheses. Um, I imagine that it's supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one fight between Alarak and Malash, and that in reality, it's not going to happen that way. But we'll see uh, next time. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye! Oh, look! I repeatedly spam clicking everything. I get monkeys. So I'm pretty sure... But there's a monster back there. Oh, he's right there! Oh, God, I ran the wrong way! I ran... Oh, why?